I'd like to introduce uh, Leggy Arnold, who is a professor at the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee in the Department of Chemistry and Bio uh, in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Leggy's group is using the ion flux automated patch clamp system to evaluate small molecule efficacy in modulating calcium flux on the GABA receptor. So I'll turn the presentation over to Leggy and we will get started with the webinar. Developed an assay to determine the GABA A receptor subtype selectivity in order to determine this for new benzodiazepines which were developed by our collaborator. So the outline for today is I want to give you a short introduction and then the first part of my talk will be about the automated, uh, the automated patch clamp assay and we will use, we are using for that transient transfected hexanine 3 T cells and we were investigating an agonist GABA and the positive modulator HD166. And then in the second part of my talk, I would like to address some technical aspects of the automated patch clamp assay. So I will address like the success rates, uh, the transfection protocol we developed, as well as our developing time. So the GABA A receptor is a ligand gated ion channel and the small molecule gamma aminobutyric acid actually inhibits the signal transduction by increasing the chlorine flux into the cell, which is also called hyperpolarization. Um, this phenomenon is uh, seen in governoric neurons, and the majority of neurons are governoric. That means they can actually produce the uh, neurotransmitter and um, can actually commute, uh, which uh, inhibits the communication between uh, two neuron cells. The GABA-A receptor itself is a pentameric membrane receptor, and I just depicted that in uh, the little figure here, um, where you have the closed receptor um, arranged in a circle, and in the presence of GABA, um, the receptor is opening and increases the chlorine flux into the cell and increases the negative potential. Um, although there are uh, 19 uh, gene products known of the subtypes of the GABA-A receptor, the most common one is the alpha-beta-gamma uh, uh, combination in the brain. And uh, in order to manipulate uh, these particular receptors, benzodiazepines have been developed a long time ago. And um, these molecules can modulate the combination of the alpha-1 to 3 and the alpha-5 together with the beta-3 and the gamma-2. These uh, different receptor combinations have an important uh, pharmacological effect, and this is what I summarized here at the uh, bottom of this slide. The alpha-1 um, is known to uh, mod uh, mod modulate uh, sedative and hypnotic effects. If you are looking for an anxiolytic uh, or an anti-anxiety compound, then you would like to have the benzodiazepine selectively uh, modulate the alpha-2, alpha-3, and alpha-5. And if you're looking for a compound which is sedative, then you would like to increase the efficacy for the alpha-4 and the alpha-6. So by um, dialing in the selectivity towards the different subtypes, we can uh, influence the pharmacological uh, profile of the benzodiazepines. The most um, known by the benzodiazepines is probably uh, diazepam, also known as Valium, which was developed a long time ago. But this uh, compound is actually relatively unselective regarding the alpha subtypes. And so I'm collaborating with uh, Dr. James Cook here at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And he worked over uh, 30 years um, developing new benzodiazepines. And he has a very successful compound, which is called HZ166. And this compound has a reduced activity for the alpha-2 and the alpha-5. So it has an increased uh, activity for the alpha-2 and alpha-3. And is therefore a very good uh, anti-anxiolytic uh, with uh, non-sedative effects. Now, our collaboration is also stretching forward from here on because we are interested in to uh, profile new compounds coming out of his lab in order to determine the efficacy 
for uh, the different subtypes of the GABA-A receptor. We are also working together with um, Professor Werner Siegert from the Medical University in Vienna. And uh, he is using a manual two electrode voltage clamp assay in order to uh, determine the activity from benzodiazepines. And this is a manual, uh, a manual assay um, where uh, oocytes, frog oocytes are um, clamped and then we have a manual compound application um, in the range of 10 to 15 seconds and um, the medium peak current uh, can be recorded after two and three seconds. And our, collaborate, uh, our collaborator was sending us the, uh, the plasmids for the different alpha subunits, one to six, and the beta three and the gamma two subunits. And we used these, sub, uh, these plasmids in order to develop an automated patch clamp assay using transiently transfected HEC293 cells. So for that purpose, we uh, purchased the Ironflux, which is an automated patch clamp instrument, and I depicted in this uh, picture over here. You can see it's uh, pretty much a benchtop instrument. It operates like a plate reader. Indeed, we are using multiple plates in order to carry out this assay. Um, the, the instrument was affordable, and it gives us very high performance data for the assay we are doing. But I just want to mention that um, this instrument is not only um, capable to assay the GABA-A receptor, but uh, all ion channels in general. So the important features of this instrument um, are that it's uh, multi-ball plate based, and so we have 96 or 384 ball plates, which in the bottom are connected, I point this out here, through a microfluidic system. And uh, the uh, plate is divided into ensembles, and these ensembles, as depicted on this slide, um, consist of 12 interconnected wells. And these are the 12 wells over here. Eight of them uh, are used uh, in order to apply compound to the patched, clamp, uh, the patched uh, cells. Then we have two trapping zones where uh, the cell is patched and then in and out in order to um, apply a new compound and flush the system. And these are overlying like this, so the uh, microfluid system is interconnecting the different wells. The fluidic uh, control is based on pneumatic pressure. Uh, once you insert the plate into the uh, instrument, it will be sealed from the top. And when you apply pressure on the top of your uh, liquid, it is pushed through the microfluid system to the trapping zone. So the trapping zone was very important for us because this, uh, the Ironflux instrument is one of the uh, few instruments which can actually tramp multiple cells, 20 cells to be co uh, uh, correct. And this is the pictures in this gray picture here. Um, we have all the 20 cells are individually uh, patched by one trapping zone. And we have uh, one trapping zone here and the other one trapping zone over there. So we are actually patching 40 cells for each ensemble, which gives us a very high success rate and also enables a high integrity skills. And we have a very minimal variability in the data we are recording with this instrument. The uh, using transient transfected HEC293 cells have some advantages and disadvantages. The advantages here is we have a very high flexibility by using different plasmids. We have a high transfection efficiency uh, using our um, transfection reagent. We are also, after we transfect our cells, we can freeze them and then thaw them um, um, when we want to use them. They have a relatively low cost, and we can also omit antibiotics um, if you compare that with stable transfected cells. The difference advantage here is that we have to transfect three different plasmids. So there is a degree of heterogeneity uh, in this assay. Uh, also, the absolute currents for the ensembles can differ, uh, but the relative uh, relationship is always the same. And we also think that maybe uh, the reagent um, can uh, weaken some of the cell membranes. 
So what I want to uh, show you today is, uh, in the first part of the talk, is a comparison between our automated patch clamp assay and a manual to electrode voltage clamp assay, which was carried out in the laboratory of Professor Siegert. So for the automated patch clamp, we are using hec 293 T cells. We are patching in one trapping zone, 20 cells. We have a fast uh, compound application, but a relatively limited amount of receptors uh, regarding the size of our cells. In comparison with the manual assay, which used oocytes, and this is a single cell assay, we have a manual compound application, but uh, we expect that we have a larger amount of receptors because these cells are bigger than the hec 293 T cells. So what I show you here, this is the uh, first piece of data where we have the alpha-1, beta-3, and uh, gamma-2, uh, gamma-A receptor, and for the manual to electrode uh, 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 clamp assay, we see an AC50 of around uh, 47 micromolar, and with our um, with our uh, automated patch clamp assay, we find an AC50 of 1.1, which is closer to the reported value in the literature um, from Burma in JBC in 2004. If we look at the sweeps, we find a very a nice response regarding an increasing amount of GABA and a saturation at higher concentration of GABA. For the alpha-2, we find an EC50 for the uh, manual patch clamp, around 19 micromolar. In our assay, we find an EC50 of 1.2 micromolar, so it's a little bit tighter. And if we look at the, uh, the sweeps, we see here that in relationship with the alpha-1, we find a smaller response to an increasing amount of GABA, but still we have nice saturation at higher concentration. For the alpha-3 GABA A receptor, we find EC50 of 80 micromolar for the manual assay, and the um, automated assay, we find an EC50 of 1.9 micromolar. Also in this case, we see that the, the sweep response is uh, very robust and comparable with the alpha-1 unit um, containing GABA-A receptor. The alpha-4 unit um, for the manual assay, we find a relatively um, shallow slope. The hill slope here is 1.7, and the EC50 is 20 micromolar. In our automated assay, we see that uh, the hill slope is uh, higher, and the EC50 is also significantly lower. Regarding the sweeps here, we find a similar, um, smaller um, increase, increase of the negative current, which is comparable with the alpha-2 subunit. Then the alpha-5, uh, we find EC50 of 8 micromolar, which is the um, smallest EC50 for the manual assay. And for our automated assay, we find an uh, EC50 of 1.3 micromolar for GABA. And also here, the response is relatively small in comparison with the alpha-1 or alpha-3. And last but not least, the alpha-6, beta-3, uh, gamma-2, uh, containing gamma-I receptor, has an EC50 of 15 micromolar for the manual assay. And for the automated assay, we find an EC50 of 0 0.23 micromolar, which is closer to the reported uh, 1.0. Uh, micromolar in JVC in 2004. So also here the sweep uh, has a very nice uh, dose response comparable with the alpha-1 containing receptor. So now I want to like switch gears and talk about a little bit the kinetics. And what I show you here is the normalized current response in relationship to the time at a GABA concentration of 3.7 micromolar. And I just overlaid here the sweeps for the receptors, GABA-A receptors, bearing different alpha subunits. And what you can see is that most of them are overlaying very well, except the alpha-3, beta-3, gamma-2 containing GABA-A receptor. So I want to point out first, uh, before um, commenting on the kinetics here, that um, it really depends, the kinetics really depends on the assay you are doing. So for instance, there is a publication from Haas in, uh, from 1999 
where he was using an outside-out um, assay and one millimolar GABA, and uh, here the activation was seen in up to like one millisecond, and the deactivation could took as long as one second. So in our case, and with our uh, conditions, we find that the activation takes um, for all except of the alpha-3 subunit containing receptor 1.1 second, whereas for the alpha-3 one is 1.6 second. And the same um, trend we can find for the desensitization, where the alpha-3 containing GABA-A receptor takes longer to desensitize. So we can make a, a relative um, um, comment on how the activation and desensitization uh, occurs uh, within the GABA-A receptor having different alpha, re alpha subunits. So in the next part of my talk, I would like to uh, show you the data um, we obtained by using a positive modulator, HC166, which is based on the benzodiazepine scaffold. Um, this assay was carried out at a, a GABA EC3 concentration with an increasing amount of the positive modulator. And what we see here is a potentiation of um, the initial uh, GABA-A induced um, current. So for the alpha-1, beta-3, and gamma-2 subunit uh, containing receptor, we find an EC50 of 1.26 micromolar and a potentiation of one point of uh, two hundred and thirty percent, and in our assay we find a very similar EC50 and a very similar potentiation. So in this case, the automated and the manual assay uh, uh, data are in agreement. These are the sweeps, and what we can see here, if we increase the amount of the uh, positive modulator in the presence of a small amount of GABA, we see an increase of the negative current. For the alpha-2 containing um, GABA-A receptor, we find an EC50 uh, in the manual assay of 0.44 micromolar and a potentiation of 400%. And we see a similar trend with um, our automated assay, although the potentiation is not as big as seen as for the manual patch clamp assay. Regarding the alpha-3, we also find an increased potentiation for the manual patch clamp assay, a uh, manual two electrode uh, clamp assay, and for our automated patch clamp assay, we find also an increase in the potentiation. And last but not least, for the alpha four, uh, five, we found that both uh, series, the um, manual two electrode voltage clamp as well as the automated patch clamp assay, give very similar results. So I just um, summarized everything in this uh, table. And what we can see here as a trend is that the automated patch clamp data seems to be a lower EC50 in comparison with the two electrode voltage clamp. But I also looked in the literature and compiled, uh, which um, I depicted here at the bottom of the sheet. And what you can see is that the data in the literature has actually a wide range. And both of the data I showed you today are actually falling within this range. The second importance here in this table is that the data um, we obtained with the automated patch clamp assay are comparable with the one with the one we uh, obtained with the manual two electrode clamp assay, where the emphasis here is a higher potentiation for the alpha two and the alpha three subunit containing receptor. So, in the second part of my talk, I would like to um, address some. Um, technical aspects, first of all, success rates. And what I show here actually is a screenshot from the Ironflux software. And um, the uh, different colors uh, are representing different ensembles. And what we can see here is that the absolute value of the induced negative current for each ensemble is different. But the relative relationship, that means and the calculated EC50 value is the same. And uh, I just depict here an extra slide where you can see that the dose response of each of the assemble is the same. Also, the absolute response will be different. 
I also want to show you like another example um, where it's maybe a little bit clearer. So we can see here that um, we have a high response in some ensembles and other ensembles the response is uh, significantly smaller. But all of them show a very nice dose-response uh, relationship. So now I want to like um, give you some pointers on how we optimize our um, cell preparation. And that was very important for us to get um, these, these good, result, good results. So first of all, we are coating all our culture flasks with metrigels. Um, so that makes the, the cells attach more quickly. And um, once we are like applying the uh, transfection reagent, the, the uh, cells are also staying attached. We are only doing bulk transfections. That means we are transfecting in the culture flask itself. And therefore, we are using liposectamine. And we are not exchanging the media after a certain amount of hours. So it's just the, um, the transfection reagent stays with the cells um, for a period of 24 hours. Um, and with this method, we get a very nice um, transfection efficiency. We are using detachin instead of trypsin. Uh, because we have seen that our cells, uh, that more cells survive uh, this procedure by using this more gently product by uh, Genlantis. Um, we also figured out that we have to re uh, suspend uh, our cells in serum-free media. This is very, very important because uh, any residual um, amounts of FBS compromise the results we are currently getting um, with our assay. Then we are using centrifugation on the resuspension in order to make sure that we get rid of additional uh, cell debris or dead cells. And then we are concentrating our cells at high concentration in order to, um, um, to trap these cells in the ion flux machine as quick as possible. Timing is also important here. We figured out that um, the cells or like the whole protocol should be done in like 30 minutes. Uh, to make sure that the cells are still viable once we start the application. So I want to give you some pointers about the assay characteristic. We are using the Iron Flux uh, 16, and this instrument is based on a 96 well plate, and the acquisition time for us is um, around 60 minutes in total. Um, we can we uh, are using two modes. We can uh, use uh, 64 different compounds and a replicate of four, or we can use the ensembles, uh, the eight different ensembles, to do dose response curves with, for instance, GABA as the agonist. And in a 96 well plate, this will allow us to uh, study eight different compounds at six to seven different concentrations with a replicate of four. For our modulator, uh, modulator assay, um, we are also using the 96 well plate. Here we can um, um, have all the different alpha subunit uh, alpha um, subunits containing receptors in one plate. Uh, these are six, but we have still like two left, so we can actually have eight uh, response curves at a concentration of six with four replicates. So we uh, this is probably very for some of you very important because we uh, purchased the instrument in uh, early spring 2012 and we could actually optimize our assay within four months. So um, this was a very short amount of time and we were very surprised but um, the instrument is very easy to handle and um, as a personnel, I had one graduate student, and she had actually no background in electrophysiology, but she was able to pick up um, uh, the essay very, very quickly. And we are now at a point where we can actually determine the subtype selectivity of benzodiazepines within like um, uh, four to three hours, profiling all the different GABA-A receptor having the different alpha subunits. So for um, the conclusion, uh, we think that the iron flux is a, is a very superior alternative to the manual patch clamp assay. First of all, it's easy to execute, as I showed you. Um, my uh, grad student uh, was able to optimize this assay within a very short amount of time. We can run a lot of different assays. Um, 
um, which allows us to, yeah, we have never done this, but we can actually run up to 10 plates a day. Uh, we get very robust data. Uh, we have a very high success rate, so the majority of our assays are successful and gives us a dose response or a response we are looking for. They are working with inhomogeneous cell population, which was very important for us um, because we, uh, we are using transient transfected cells. We have a flexible uh, compound addition, um, which allows us to apply the compound one time, three times, as many times as we want to. We also address, uh, we can um, comment on the relative kinetic analysis. And because of the uh, speed of this assay, it is also, has also high throughput screening abilities. So at the end, um, I would like to thank my collaborators. Um, first of all, Professor Werner Siegert and Joachim Rensdorfer um, for giving us the, uh, providing us with the, with the plasmids, but and also providing us with the data regarding the uh, manual uh, two electrode uh, clamp assay, and also our collaborator at the University of Milwaukee, Professor James Cook, who provided us with the small molecule HC166. And for sure, my graduate student Nina Wong, who um, um, who did all the uh, all the work which I presented here today, and for financial support, uh, support the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee and the National Institute of Mental Health. And I also would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm uh, happy to um, answer the upcoming questions.